every good movie needs a hero. But what good is a hero without a villain? Growing up in the early 80s, I can remember vividly the villains that haunted my mind on a daily basis. Whether it be Skeletor from He-Man, Gargano from the Smurfs, Shredder and Crane from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or the Claw from Inspector Gadget. I know I'm dating myself here, but these were the villains that I came to know and see every day during my early childhood. The very images of these villains still appear burned into my very mind today, roughly 30 years later. Now, I'm not sure if you all can relate to the villains that I personally grew up with, but each and every one of us has grown up into this society with our own perspective on villains. Today's generation of kids have a completely different class of villains to relate to. Take example some of these new films, such as Toy Story Zerg, Scar from The Lion King, Hopper from A Bug's Life, or the new Captain Hook from Jake and the Neverland Pirates. These are the villains that my two young sons can relate to. All villains have one thing in common, and that is the fact that, well, they're villains. A villain, as the Wikipedia states, can also be known as the antagonist, the bad guy, the black hat. He is an evil character in a story, whether historical narrative or especially a work of fiction. The villain usually is the character who tends to have a negative effect on other characters. Villains can show us how life isn't always easy and awarding when facing difficult situations. The importance of a villain in life can display the lesson of choosing the route of right or wrong. The importance of a villain in a film can bring action and excitement to watch and root for. Finally, the importance of a villain in a book develops the story's plot and characterization. For this review, I wanted to bring a sort of relevance to the product that I am reviewing. I hope this makes the review feel more personal and awarding. With the turn of the century, the year 2000 brought in a new and fresh look to the wooden railway. New engines such as Lady Dodge, Splatter and Trevor were released. However, none of these were as devious as the Diesel himself, Diesel 10 aka Pinchy. With a billion dollar industry on hand, it was imminent that the Thomas brand was on top of the world. Rightly so, merchandise for the Thomas brand continued to skyrocket. It was time for a major motion picture. The 2000 release of Thomas and the Magic Railroad sought to cash in on this cash cow. The movie casted Hollywood blockbuster names such as Alex Baldwin, Peter Fonda, and Mara Wilson. With an estimated budget of $19 million, the movie ended up being a complete disaster as far as Hollywood standards go and only racked in $15.9 million in gross revenues. Although the movie didn't go as planned, it did however pave a new foundation for learning curve within the wooden railway. The movie introduced new characters that I believe were needed in the franchise. An antagonist such as Diesel 10 made his debut as an evil Diesel who went by the alias name of Pinchy. Diesel 10, who was always causing problems for the steam engines, is probably best known for his famous chase scene involving Lady. The evil antagonist worked alongside of Dodge and Splatter to destroy Lady for good, but ended up being unsuccessful at the end. He is considered to be a BR British Railway Class 42 warship with capable speeds of up to 90 miles an hour. His added non-regulation hydraulic claw can be seen over and over within the movie and is considered to be sort of a weapon to other engines. More recently, in 2011, HIT Entertainment and Lionsgate teamed up to release The Day of the Diesels, which reintroduced us to the devious works of Diesel. Not only does Diesel have a bigger entourage of sidekicks, but the movie goes on to explain where he lives and why he doesn't care for the steamies in the first place. This movie gives us some insight into manipulative ways that Diesel tries to infiltrate Sodor. I have to say I really believe that this character was needed in the wooden railway. The world we live in today is filled with pinchy-like characters everywhere we look. The reality is that even Sodor is not a perfect world.